uh, Jesus fulfilling those scriptures right there on the cross. Can you imagine the Son of God, God the Son of all eternity, that came to earth at a rough little start, at a rough, rough year, in the natural on earth, came to die for it. But while he was on the cross, he was God the Son, laid flat down and turned himself into all known people. And the Father had to come to the He cried. Let's open our Bibles up now to Matthew chapter 7. There's lots of us, as I said earlier, there's lots of silver rule, but there's only one golden rule. Mm, yeah. What's the golden rule? The golden rule. Uh, love. The pastor while he's trying to get into service. Love, no, love one another. As, and love one another as yourself. And love God above all. Love God with all your heart and all your mind and all yourself. All right, that's part of it. That's the law of the commandments. What is the chapter? Let's start off in chapter 7, verse 12. Really and it's even, a, 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 I'll begin in verse 1, 2, verse 12. But right now, just 12, verse 12. Go ahead and read that somebody out loud in this house this morning. The law of the prophets, that's the Bible, that they had Jesus say, that's the Torah, the five books of Moses, and the Psalms, Proverbs, and the prophets, you know, Isaiah, all the way down to Malachi. Why did God say the word is here? Do it unto men as you would have them do to you. Not do to men what they're doing to you. It didn't even say, don't hurt nobody. Just make a, it says do to them what you want done to you. Right. My friends, when Abel offered an awesome sacrifice to God, brought his a yearly perfect lamb without blemish, uh, prophesying that Jesus one day is going to be the perfect lamb. Amen. He was doing that to, to bless God. 
and to show his older brother Cain how, how good he's doing. He's doing what God wanted him to do. Cain, did not, Cain didn't take the, the vice of his younger brother and bring his best. He didn't care about God. He didn't care about his brother. He only cared about the self. When you only think about what you need and you think that's God and just getting what you need, that's a blessing. But when you're really born again and you've got the mind of Christ and you're living for God and the blood has washed your soul clean and you're the way you're supposed to be, you care more about what others want than what you need. And in doing so, God's going to what? He's going to provide all your needs, brother Paul. He's going to bless you. Amen. Do you know in Leviticus when he said, Be ye holy, for I am holy? He listed out about 32 verses there on the traits of being holy and how they are. Every one of them shows that you're to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you love God, you're going to love your neighbor as yourself because that's what God wants you to. Come on, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Has anyone ever heard of uh, Islam? Amen. Have, uh, a, a, I call it a silver, a silver rule. It's not the gold rule. In the Quran, it teaches that you're not to hurt a fellow believer and don't do unto them what you wouldn't want done to you. That's not the golden rule. It's pretty good. I wouldn't want anyone in this church to go slap each other. The Quran teaches that. Has anyone ever heard of a Buddhism? Yeah. Buddhism teaches not to. If, if, if something you do hurts you, like don't hit yourself, don't hit your neighbor with a knife if you don't want to be hit with a knife. Well, that's a pretty good rule, but that's just a silver rule. It's not the word of God. God's word is we're to go beyond all that and to, and to uh, do unto others what we as a born again saint would have done to us. Now, before you can get born again, before you can be saved, you've got to believe the gospel. You better believe that Jesus laid his life down for you on the part of the tree up there on that old rugged cross. While he was desiring to, 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 to be with the Father, he still was doing what we needed, saying, Father, forgive me. For they know not what they did. The world that was killing him, or so they thought, he laid his life down. The whole time he was intercessing for the very ones that were harming him. You, if before salvation, you were just as guilty as the Roman soldiers, drilling those nails, nailing them into his hands, flattening that crown of thorns down onto his head. Amen. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is the Bible. This is the word of God. This is Jesus' testimony. Amen. Save folks, go out and do good to those that, that don't deserve good. That's called grace, amen. We don't not supposed to just look. I know we love the, the household of faith, but we're supposed to go out and, and love and do to others. Wicked folks that don't even deserve it, do it to them what we would have done to us. Amen. When you get old and, 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 and gray hair and you're if, if, you end up in a nursing home like Sister Clyde was or my grandma Tucker. Wouldn't you like some people from the church to come sing with you and visit with you? Pray for your infirmities, lay hands on you? Amen. Amen. When you're in sin, you don't think about that, those things. You think about your own life and what you want and what you need. You don't listen to the unction of God. You don't obey the law of God. You don't listen to the prophets of God. You don't listen to the word. You don't fellowship. You just well, in your own self, and yourself will take you straight to hell without even no aid from the devil trying to trick you, attempt you, or throw darts at you. He does all that. But when you're, that's what he does to the saint, shoots in fiery darts. If you're, if you're full of the devil, he ain't shooting darts at you. He's patting you on the back all the way into hell. Out of boy, selfish little punk, come on with me. That's what he wants. Jesus under there, Father, forgive me. Amen. When you believe the gospel, you get a broken heart, and you just want the Holy Ghost to, to draw you to Jesus' feet where you can say, Lord, I'm sorry. Amen. Then he'll have you out witnessing for him, 
telling everyone how wonderful he is? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm not even getting started yet. Start in the book of Luke, chapter 6. Y'all remember a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, I preached about the, the Beatitudes, how Christ on the cross yeah. simplified every one of them, lest they hunger and thirst after righteousness, and so forth and so on. Well, in chapter 6 of Luke, I've got in my Bible, you know, the, the woe attitudes. And it, he mentioned some of the some of the Beatitudes in chapter 6, but in verse 24 it begins on what I call the woe attitudes. He said, Woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. And that's when a person thinks that they've got all they need, they've got plenty of all their wherewithal. They don't care about no one else. They got all they need. They can make it all the way. They're gonna live forever rich. Jesus said, "Whoa, woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger." I know people wouldn't go to church because they seem to know the Bible so long, so well. They've had so many church services that that the world, the church, is just full of hypocrites now. So I'm just gonna stay at the house and read my Bible. I've heard people tell me this. Woe unto you that are full. You better, you better assemble and, 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 and go out and help others and, 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 and uplift your brothers and exhort them and edify them. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, you got ears on? Love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Is somebody, amen, using you? It happens quite often. It doesn't mean to go curse them and say, you're not going to use me. I'm a child of God. I'll step all over you. I'll stop on you. That's not how you do it. You ask the Father, Lord, save me. They're not right. They're attacking me because I love you. Father, and, then, and the Lord will have you go do a <laughs> kind thing to them, a merciful thing to them, not a spiteful, hateful, wicked thing to them. That's why we forsake not the assembly of ourselves. You know how you ever invited someone out to church? You told them about Jesus, and they say, Yeah, where do you go to church? And you invite them out, and you give them a church card, you tell them, or you pass out cards. And then the day they come to church, you're not even there. Because you had other things going on. You, you had someone in your family sick, or whatever it was. Whoa! Blessed are those that are hungry and want to know more about God. Blessed are those that, that thirst after righteousness. You know, we get our souls fed right here at the storehouse. My Bible tells me that. Oh, I know I can watch TV and I get good messages. But Jesus talks to me while I'm in the shower and while I'm driving in my car, while I'm mowing the grass. But God has put a special emphasis in place on His church that He's paid for with His own blood on the cross so that we can go out and shift in exemplify and show the world the golden rule. I often take my friends, whoever's around me, I take them to eat, and I like to pick up the chip. Uh, not to show for anything, but because I take the golden rule such to heart, I would think it was awesome that people when we out eating, pay for my meal. That's what I would want. So I do it instead because the Bible says, do unto others what you'd want men to do to you. It doesn't tell them to, it doesn't tell us to do it with what men are doing to us. People are mean to you. Don't mean to be mean back. You be good to them. Man, when, I, when, I, when I'm sick, I would love someone to take me to the doctor if I needed to go. When I was in sin, I would have loved someone to have saved and got me to Jesus and got me saved. And in that respect, the, 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 the church let me down and Jesus did. Because I didn't look savable. I was going as a black sheep in my little family. Sons in Christ. Amen. Oh, they pray for me. My grandma said, pray for a sinner. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Long time. Save him, kill him. I'm in her house, you get out of my house, you devil. 
That's what my grandma would say. God rest her soul. I love her. Amen. But she didn't do unto me as she wasn't done unto her. We've lived in, a, in here in America in the church age where if you think that uh, just busting people's hides all the time is how it's done. Busting people's hides is truly getting them at home, letting them know they need to get a hold of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost uh, bodily touch them where they want to deny themselves. And it ain't me, me, me no more. It's everyone else. Jesus could have called on, he said, 10,000 thousands of angels. He, he didn't have to go to the cross. He wanted to go to the cross to save us. My mind doesn't comprehend all, all the fascinating things the blood did for us. I know it saved my soul. I know I got the Holy Ghost. I know I'm born again. I know I'm going to heaven. But there's things and we'll be in heaven for eons of eternity and learn more and more and more how the cross is the only reason we exist. If it wasn't for Christ going to Calvary's tree, the cross, then we'd be, we'd be lost. There'd be no heavens. There'd be no new heaven. There'd be no, res no restoration between the Father and Son. There'd be no reason for man to be created. There'd be no reason to lock up the devil in hell. Everything would just be over. But thanks be to the Calvary's tree. God is God. And, and, and he uses the cross here to show us all how godly he is. He Amen. I know they used to sacrifice animals in anticipation of the Messiah coming. Put off the sins annually. And then you had your weekly and monthly and your different Sabbaths. And people were atonement for the sin. Because ever since Adam and Eve were born into sin, animals were slaughtered because there had to be blood up until Jesus came. It used to when, they would, when, when people would bring a, an animal, you have to sacrifice it. Sin, and this was a rub off to God for the priest to have food and for the temple. That food could only had to be consumed within three days. If somebody, if a priest, a low priest, or even the high priest, one of them gifts from God, kept it, ate it after the after the third on the third day or thereafter, my Bible says his soul cut off. From the people and from God. And I've, I've often wondered if you want to give something to God, it's a natural that they see Jesus more than they can see it over there. And you have a bunch of gifts that you can give to God. It's part of it. Hand. And I know my, my speech is plain and simple, but whatever you want to give for God, whether it's money, whether it's all your heart, all you whatever you give, it's got to be used for his kingdom quickly. And there's nothing wrong, Richard, with storing things. I know you got a lot of stuff in the yard, and I got a lot of things over there at the flea market. But when God gives us an increase, it's to spread out and give to others as we like to receive ourselves. The rich man, he said, wow, I've got all this stuff, I'm paraphrasing. Man, my barn won't even hold this year's game tape. I got enough to last me and Emma probably 